Um, hey guys, so I am going to go through the Hot Toys um, Mandalorian Incinerator Stormtrooper. Um, then I will go through the Hot Toys Solo Mall. Um, we'll see how we go. I was going to do it as two separate videos, but I think the Stormtrooper is going to be really quick. Um, so I should be able to do both of them in the one stream. Alright, so starting off, um, starting off like always, we have the standard Hot Toys um, Star Wars shoebox stuff they do there you see that they've got the um, trooper in quite a dynamic pose with the flame effect looking quite nicely um, it does say um, TV movie series number 12 sorry, TV master series number 12 um, it's in a red stormtrooper so it's a scale collectible figure um, underneath when you lift that up you do get the um, topper art as always and again, it is the trooper in that sort of um, burning pose. And then um, you do have the actual tray. Now, I have actually taken all the accessories out except for the extra hands. So um, you do see that they, do, they are very nicely weathered and they do have the red on them. Um, so there's a second trigger hand. A uh, couple of re um, relaxed hands, fisty cuffs, and then another relaxed, um, and then like an open, really open hand. Um, and they just sit on top where the base would have been. That is where the pack would have been. Trooper, obviously, and then the cannon and the flame. Um, so the trooper himself. Now, I just did actually realize that I did not actually clip up the buckle on the backpack. I'll probably do that um, after I do this. Um, it's just something that I just realized I didn't do when I set him up. Alright, so his display stand um, is probably the strangest thing here. I was expecting them to reuse that really um, overused desert base that they've used for everything, and it's coming back with another figure. I can't remember what that is, um, but you see it does have the little nameplate that says Cinderella Trooper, um, and it's similar to that Death Star flooring that we've gotten with most of the original trilogy style figures um because we didn't really see these guys on this type of floor i thought it was really strange that they included it um as i said i expected them to use that we use that display stand that we've seen with mando cody luke um so many others all right looking at the trooper himself his helmet is very nicely weathered you can see that a lot of the paint has um does have that chip away effect now um he does have the green eyes that the rogue one troopers do have um i'm trying to get it to show in the light but i don't think it's going to as it is quite overcast um today um that's unfortunate but you can see that the helmet itself is very nicely weathered and that's that um paint chipping away effect that I was mentioning. Um, now, a couple of people have talked about the tanks being back, um, upside down. I'm not too sure if they're talking about the middle one in general, um, whether that's the issue, because the nozzles are in the correct spot. I did check that um, with a still from the episode. Um, now, what's interesting is that Hot Toys themselves actually added that Imperial star um i don't think the star itself was there in the episode again it could have been and that's maybe that's what people are talking about that it should have been um up the top rather than down low i'm not sure um but again the nozzles are in the right spot um the hose yeah you could probably futz around with it and make it go underarm like it is in the show um i just haven't done that just because i wanted to do um the quick look um, and you can see that weathering and the paint chipping kind of continues down through the figure. It's just placing him back down. Um, other than that, it is the standard Stormtrooper. Um, probably still the Rogue One Trooper, given the fact he has the green eyes. Um, and he does not have the slot for the E11. Um, and he does not include an E11. So... But there's that. Um, the flame effect is very nice, as is the gun itself. And uh, you can see that it kind of connects into the pipes there. Um, so there isn't really a lot going on with him other than the fact that he is a cool-looking red and white stormtrooper uh, with a flamethrower. Um, 
but overall I think he's a very nice figure to have and I will fix oh, this hand here yeah um, with when holding the um, flamethrower it does kind of the way you have to angle it, it does kind of come off the peg a bit um, I'll just whack that on whack that back on later um, and then like I said I'll do up his little clip that um, does up in the middle there um, but like I said, overall, it is quite a nice Stormtrooper, but there are a few people complaining about the fact that this section here um, is a lot longer than it should be, and it's a lot longer than it was in the episode, and the tanks um, are also inaccurate. As I said, I'm not 100% sure on the inaccuracy of the um, tanks, and I honestly can't remember if he had these bits or not. Um, but there are plenty of stills from the episode that you can go check out. Alright, so now we have the DX Maul from Solo, so DX18 Maul, um, we do have the slip cover this time, showing him with his um, saber ignited in a combat pose, I suppose. So, um, being a DX figure, it does actually have the slip out style box, let's just move this over here, um, so Star Wars. Darth Maul, Disney, that's where the food comes out, um, and then you can just see another bit of the box where it slides, and then um, you've got all the credits and whatnot. Um, so there is a crimson picture of Darth Maul there, I'll just move it into the light so you can see it a bit better, I just say Star Wars DX18 Darth Maul, um, and then of course the actual Thing slides out and you have the typical DX style cover with the extra accessory. This time around they've given us a keychain um, with the Crimson Dawn logo. Now I think it's a plastic or is it I don't think it's cub. Um, a lot of people were saying that this Yeah, I think it's just plus I think it's plastic. Calm. And it's coated a bit, so it probably is a bit cheap um, to what we're used to with getting with Hot Toys. But given the fact that they do cause babies and whatnot now, a cheap key tainting probably isn't the worst thing they've ever done. Um, and then we have the actual figure itself. So being a DX, this lifts off as it normally would. Um, and you do have the name of the figure and the warning about, is it his head? Oh, it's just telling you to read the instructions. So again, um, this just slips here. I normally just put it to the side until I put them back in. Um, I haven't removed. I have removed the plastic from the head um, already. The only plastic I left on him is this part here. Um, so I'll go over the accessories first. So a lot of people, um, and this does lift out to reveal the extra tray. Now a lot of people have said that they don't know why this is a DX. Um, I think it's because of the fact that the standard Hot Toys figures haven't not really been coming with a lot lately, um, other than a few exceptions like Cody um, and a couple of others. But most of the uh, figures have been pretty bare bones, and I think that's why they called this one a DS. They probably also did it because they already had the per sculpt for more. Um, which I'll go over in a second, sorry. Alright, so he does include um, the seat that he has or the cushiony thing that he had from um, Solo. So you can see that it's identical on both sides. Um, it is well weighted, um, does have a gripping there if you're using it on anything but carpet. Um, and then, like I said, it does look like a cushion and it's very nicely sculpted to make it look like it's been sat on. Um, and it is quite large. So that would sit on this massive display stand, which does say Star Wars Darth Maul. Now, I thought, think it should just say Maul, given the fact that he has lost the title, but I suppose that's just a time-saving thing that Hot Toys have done, because they have already done a Darth Maul figure. Um, there is the pole for the DX poses, um, and again, you do get the two different style lightsaber blades, um, you do get the swoosh effect and the normal. That's the batteries for the light up arm. That's the rod for the purrs. And then that's the extra wrist pegs. Which hopefully no one will need. And that's just the 
grabber for when he's on his stand. Um, yes, a lot of people have said that they do not like the size of the stands. Um, Hot Toys has always used oversized stands for DX figures, um, with the exception of, I think, the Terminator. I think his display stand for the DX was um, the artwork for the chip. Um, overweight. So, as I did say, um, just pops back in there. Oh, hang on, how was that? Uh, I think it was like that. There's this. No, I was right the first time, it is the other way. Right, sorry guys. All right, now since that's sorted. So as I did say, um, this comes back down and sits in here. And then you do have the top tray here. Now I have already put the necklace on him and I'll go over that in a second. But basically this um, pops up and you do have the two different sabers. Now um, this is the standard saber. Um, and it does connect to his belt by, via this very thin piece here. It just kind of slots down like a zipper does. Um, very nice detailing on the hilt. It is plastic though. And then you get a second hilt. Now the bottom of this one is die cast, but the top of it is plastic, I think. Um, it is a lot heavier than the, than the other one. Um, and then of course this has the battery section for the light of effect. Um, I probably won't use the light up effect for this one um just simply for the fact that he i know he does it for the one scene um one thing to note though know, it is still a double edged lightsaber so one there one there um even though we only saw him use one part of it in the film um we also do get these very cool holographic pieces so there is one of maul himself um now a lot of people have also questioned this as an accessory but i mean it doesn't really matter who you put it with um, there is the episode of Clone Wars where you see Darth Maul um, announce Crimson Dawn um, and he's got all the mob leaders there. So the fact that he does come with something like this is quite cool. Um, and then we also get the little holographic Kira um, for Maul to be looking at. And you can just place her on the floor itself um, as well, which would work fine. All right, and he does also get um, the various hands. So again, there are some, um, there are two hands for holding the lightsaber on either hand. I think this one, yeah. So you do get the relaxed, more of a C grip hand. Uh, you do get two force pushing, pulling, whatever hands. And then these ones should be the relaxed. Yep, and then you just get these um, more hands by his side hands as well. So there are a few there. Now, on to the figure himself. Now, I thought this was mostly going to be a redo of the Phantom Menace more, um, but luckily it is not. The costume is actually completely different material. Um, so the necklace is just um, very basic. It is on a chain. You can see it looks, um, it does look quite nice, similar um, yeah, so similar gold to what the keychain has. Um, of course it is a bit nicer in the fact that it is, um, an actual accessory and not on a plastic card. Um, so that little silver bit there is what I was talking about. So there is a bit on the lightsaber that slides in there and you do have that belt there. Now this is actually a pleverish type of material. Um, as opposed to the clothy robe that he had in The Phantom Menace. And you can see that they do have all um, his tattoos under there. I'm not sure how many of them are there. I'm not going to try and take the whole thing off. Um, you can also get the Clone Wars Maul if that is something you prefer. Um, I wanted the older look for him as opposed to um, the younger... I know the Clone Wars one's obviously 
older than Phantom Menace, but given the fact that I already had this one ordered, I just decided to stick with it, and I probably will not get the Clone Wars one. Um, the Clone Wars one does feature a different sculpt again, I believe, and a different lightsaber, um, as well as the costume being completely different as well. So it just depends on which type of costume you prefer for him. Um, now the sculpt is magnetic and it does, it's completely interchangeable with the Phantom Menace one. So you can have the younger sculpt on the different outfit if you would prefer. Um, the sculpt itself is damn good as you can see. And it does have all his horns and they are quite sharp and whatnot. Um, and you can see in there, it does have the pose, which is the rolling eyes. Um, similar to other figures in the DX series or um, characters like Alita, etc. Now, the biggest difference here is other than the plever, um, all this plever is on wires, and so you can have it floating or whatever. But the other biggest difference is the fact that he has the robotic legs. Now, um, I think the legs might be a slightly different style in Clone Wars, um, but we can see that the detailing on the legs is also awesome. Lots of different colouring in there, um, wires, pistons, whatnot. Um, just to give it that real robotic feel. Um, of course, it is plastic, and now you can see that doing that, I have um, kind of lifted the wires up. So you can see that the wires in the outfit are quite good. Um, he also does have a wired hood, um, which is a cloth material, and is much nicer than what we got with the Phantom Menace version. Um, all right, guys, so this has been a quick look at the... Uh, um, Incinerator Trooper from Mando and the solo cameo Darth Maul.